Hey everybody, this is Birch. Well, uh, at the time of this recording, not a lot of people have commented on this particular angle, um, but I'm I'm confident by the time I actually process it, put it out, and everything else, it will be because there's some uh, articles showing up at Forbes and other places, and it's gonna. It's just very obvious, you know. You, you you make a video on this topic, you throw a picture of like Bob Iger and Mickey with googly eyes and tears, you know, and you put uh, well, destruction of Disney is your headline. I mean, then like this this. I look forward to the, uh, you know, culture war shifting to one of the, the primary voices being completely AI generated on both sides, by the way, uh, because I think there's enough material out there. AI could just generate these videos, you know, get a get a good, um, you know, voice to text kind of thing going on and you're there. Uh, but anyway, um, this the story is basically this. It's 2023. And it is now certain. There's uh, there's no mathematical way for it to occur. Uh, Disney will not have a billion dollar movie this year. There's there's no billion dollar movies that that there, that are, that will be produced by Disney this year. And um, this is you know this is one of those things that I think people may leave out this fact. So just you know it's it's better to be informed, even if being informed about all the facts takes a little bit of the sharpness away. You know, you, you, we really want to dunk on people. You really want to kind of slam things in. And this, this like couches it a le- back a little bit. Um, but uh, Disney also, you know, when was the last time Disney didn't have a billion dollar movie in a calendar year? Well, that was 2000. So, you know, three years ago, now COVID, right? Movie theaters were shut down. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's we, we can kind of ignore that one. Otherwise, you have to go back to 2014, so basically nine years ago. So Disney's had a nine-year run, minus COVID, the one-year of COVID, where they made a billion dollars in the box office. And in most cases, uh, the kind of brand that was carrying that weight was Marvel. It was the MCU that was uh, bringing a lot of these in. And that, that you know, and it definitely was some other stuff, some of their animated features, um, uh, definitely got there. I think there's a Star Wars movie or two rolled in there. So I, I think you know, it it uh, it is it is noteworthy, and you're going to see a lot of what this article is already has Disney lost its movie making magic. Well, you know, in a different way, this is just a different type of clickbaity headline. Um, you know, there were those same articles. I actually, as I was looking around at this story, I put in 2014. Disney lost its movie making magic and and shocking there were a bunch of uh, articles then as well because they didn't hit that milestone in 2014 and uh, clearly things can change um but it it doesn't feel like uh, it doesn't feel like 2014 2014 had a lighter um you know palette of movies that came out they were getting a lot of the MCU stuff rolling so you had were kind of between kind of the big franchise plays that were starting to stack up and, uh, and so, you know, it, it's, to me, it's, it's a little bit to be expected. Um, but this one is, is, is different and it's different because there were some more major movies coming out. Now, if I look at the ones that are being listed, you know, they're citing kind of four movies from Disney that should have gotten there. And they are, the, the movies that are listed are the Marvels, um, uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and Wish. So if I'm looking at each one of those movies and being, you know, a little bit more critical about it, I think the idea that Wish was going to get to a billion dollars was you're smoking crack. There, there, just, there was no way that film was going to get there. Um, the quality of the animation, the songs were not memorable. I mean, just you could go down the list of all the things. And by the way, and I'll come back to this point a little bit later, what's also important to realize, and you hear this a lot, when it's convenient for people to say it, and then shockingly, you stop hearing it when it's not. And it's it's that not all these movies are for everyone. A wish is for children. It doesn't mean adults can't enjoy it. If you're an adult and you like watching those cartoons, cool. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I think the last uh, Disney animated film I enjoy, I like Tangled. I thought it was a good movie. My daughters love Tangled. Even though I like Tangled, it, it, unless I'm a lunatic, I have to, you know, admit or just, you know, or just say Tangled wasn't made for me. 
Now, I, if, if I happen to enjoy it, great, but it was made for children. Wish was made for children, and it was made poorly. Um, it was a very paint-by-numbers, bland kind of film. Uh, lots of lots of videos about how woke it was. That was not the problem with that movie. Dull was the problem with that movie. And I'll come back to this point a little bit later, but, but one of the complaints I have about a lot of critics, in particular people on YouTube who, who take delight on things, is they, it's fine, you have your own voice, you have your own thing you want to complain about, but ask the people who, in theory, are the audience for these movies if they like it. Because that's an interesting perspective to have. With Wish, it's my children, quite frankly, are going to be the litmus test to this. You know, not, and I think guys are fine, but like the, the people at Cloudfish, for example, Wes from Thinking Critical, you know, they can certainly hate on it. They can make jokes about it, but they're, they're not the target audience. If you lose them, eh. But if you lose kids, there's a problem. But regardless, Wish was never going to get to a billion dollars. Uh, the other one is the Marvels. I think the Marvels getting to a billion dollars was a fantasy. Now, I know Captain Marvel, the original one, got to a billion dollars. But again, it was sandwiched between a cliffhanger Avengers two-parter. Um, it was a brand new Marvel character. Marvel's red hot at the time. Uh, that, you know, it, there's a lot of reasons why Captain Marvel uh, made that money. Yeah, that, that have nothing to do, by the way, with the conspiracy theories that, that went out there. But there's a lot of reasons why Captain Marvel was going to make that money. Um, the Marvels, on the other hand, feature two characters from Disney Plus series that are uh, not known by many people. You had to more or less watch WandaVision and uh, and Miss Marvel in order to kind of know what was going on in a lot of cases. You, you the, the, the film, the plot was kind of B-list uh you know, some kind of weird Star Trek or cartoon uh, plot. It, it just, the idea that that movie is going to make a billion dollars, I think, is tough. The two that should have, however, is Indiana Jones, which was billed as kind of last time we're going to see him. And the first, like, 15 minutes or so where it's CG Indiana Jones, that pretty good. Like, I, I, I mean, you, you know, you could tell if you're looking at it, you know he's CG, but if you just, uh, or CGI, rather... Computer graphics. There you go. The headline now. Perch calls Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones CG. Harrison Ford to have new crowdfunded comic soon. Anyway, computer graphics. Uh, I, you know, I, I was, I was watching that movie going, I don't know why you just didn't do the entire two hours in, in computer graphics and, and call it a day. I, I, you know, <laughs> the older indie was kind of a bummer. But you should have seen, you know, that one should have gotten to a billion dollars. But in a rational world, it didn't. And then Guardians of the Galaxy 3 also should have gotten to a billion dollars. Once again, you got kind of you know, the finish of the trilogy. If you look at Disney history of uh, how their movies have gone, even Iron Man, but certainly things like Captain America, which led to, to Civil War, or, um, you know, or, you know what, what happened with Thor. Like, there, that one should have done it and gotten there. The fact that it didn't was uh, surprising. Um, I guess there's one other film that sometimes is the Ant-Man uh, Quantumania. Also didn't get there. That one, uh, again, th that was unlikely, I think, based, again, on a track record. I mean, there's a math and a sciences stuff where you look at Ant-Man 1, you look at Ant-Man 2, and you can kind of project out, you know, what's going to happen with Ant-Man 3. And so the projections didn't ever have it getting there to a billion dollars. It did for Indiana Jones. It did for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. But anyway, so... What does all this is mean? And so I said I'd come back to it. The, the, the trick with all this is, and, and there's lots of speculation, there's lots of, you know, Disney in their filings said we're not, you know, connecting. Our message is not connecting with a good portion of our audience. Our uh, ideological values, some of our DEI stuff is not, not hitting uh, with our audience. Okay, fine. Um, you know, by the way, as somebody who's written and contributed to annual reports and, and been part of those, you, you do need to understand that the annual report, and those SEC filings are a way to manage your shareholders. And so once again, that you're not the audience, even if you like what's being said there, or you like that Disney has admitted their flaws. Disney is, is, um, yeah, I don't know, for lack of a better word, manipulating their shareholders to tell a particular story. That's what's going on there. So there's probably a video in that. I need to, to break that down a little bit further. 
Um, I'm not saying that's not a, you know, an admission and, and everything else. It's just, you should look at that one slightly with, uh, your skeptical eyes of what is actually being said because they are, they're, they're, they're playing a game to some extent. But what's going on here, if you look at this, is if you, when you look at the target audience for these movies, and in Wish's case, it's kids. In Indiana Jones's case, it would be kind of adventure and nostalgia, mostly nostalgia. In the Marvel movies case, it is comic book fans and comic book slash MCU fans, probably more the MCU fans. Which is why um, the Marvels, I think, never had a chance to get to a billion dollars. Too much of it was dependent on uh, people watching Disney Plus, um, people who are kind of really immersed in that part of the world. Uh, it was to, it 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 didn't hit the notes of what MCU fans have come to expect. It's like you know, MCU fans got very excited with the kind of over the top drama and light quipping of a civil war, the movie Civil War, that's kind of peak MCU uh, of what those fans come to expect and, and want. What is uh, what, what doesn't hit is things like She-Hulk and the Marvels, which goes deeper into the comedy aspects, which is, you know, the stakes are, you know, the subverting expectation parts, villains that are, you know, more forgettable. If you look at at kind of the, the the villains and how they set up things, whether it's people like uh, Zemo kind of manipulating behind the scenes or Killmonger and Black Panther, um, you know, to a lesser extent, the Jude Law character. And then you look at um, places where the box office is punished Marvel a little bit, Malekith in uh, Dark World 2 or to some extent Ghost in, uh, you know, in, in Ant-Man 2. There's a difference between how the villain is portrayed, and Marvel's was definitely that second camp. The villain was forgettable. She didn't do anything by and large. It was, you know, it was it was not a good villain. And the comedy was amped up, and it relied too heavily on you watching the thing. So, so it's not hitting the audience well. Guardians three, of all the films with Indiana Jones, you could go well. The actor was too old. You know, it, it, it just, uh, that kind of balloon has passed. It, it got, had bad word of mouth. It was, some was deserved, some was not deserved, but it just, you know, it just wasn't going to land. You could, you could make that argument about Indiana Jones. The ones that should probably terrify, uh, Marvel is Guardians 3. That one, I think, is, uh, is, is one where you, you have to be terrified if you're running the MCU of where it's all going. Because that one should have been a slam dunk to a billion dollars. You have the same director that's done the other two. You have characters that are, by and large, very, very popular. Uh, Pratt, you know, had a, had a good year with Mario and just is a likable character that people like. Uh, regardless of whatever his religious views are, uh, people like him. Uh, you know, Batista, you know, who is Drax. Again, despite what his politics are, despite the fact that he is definitely anti-Trump, people like him. So it's like, you know, there are these actors that cross over. They don't get defined by, you know, what they tweet or who they vote for. They're popular. And this was viewed as, you know, from the trailers, was viewed as the send-off, the blow-off. The trailers were heavily teasing that Star-Lord was going to get killed. And that was how it was going to end, you know, the carrying his body around. There's it, it was one of those films where that one should have been a very safe bet. And the fact that it didn't get there is a deeper indication that not only did the uh, audience that this is designed for, and in theory, you know, it, the movie largely delivered what the audience would want, didn't show up anyway. That is probably the, you know, the, not just a canary in the coal mine, but the blaring alarm bell to what's going on in terms of these movies and, and how they're going to perceive, be perceived and, you know, what's next for a lot of this stuff. So, you know, in, in total, you could certainly boil this down to, you know, Disney ingested too much of its own politics and things into the movies. And that there, there's some truth to that. You know, the, the movies and a lot of what Disney has done has prioritized how they want to be perceived 
by you know Twitter versus to me the 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 far more simple answer they're just not landing with their target market they it's you know they're they're caught up in the trap it's the same kind of trap from several years ago where it's like a good movie has to subvert expectations okay don't think so a good movie can be just a good movie these are details you can subvert expectations and have a great plot in the process and it's a good movie and it works but it's not that you subverted expectations. It's the fact that it was a good movie. Where the MCU, where Disney, where all these films are concerned, is you have to put out a good film that's going to land with your target audience. Whether you like your target audience or you don't like your target audience or you think you need more of a target audience or whatever it happens to be. Being caught in the trap of, we've got to attract new viewers. Okay, but you didn't. They stayed home. They went to Barbie. They went to, uh, you know, Mario. You know, one of the funny parts is, and, and I know a lot of people made this point as well, is you can't say, oh, hey, you know, uh, you know, it, it, the problem is Disney just can't do feminist stuff. They can't do, I, I don't know, Barbie pulled it off. Disney didn't. Why? Why was Barbie able to pull that stuff off? Barbie went into toxic manhood and all that other kind of stuff, and the director is certainly somebody that uh, you would list as a uh, culture, uh, that social justice warrior, whatever it happens to be, you'd certainly portray that. You'd, you'd, it admits it herself. So why did it, why did it do well? Well, because it, it landed with its target audience. They liked it. That's the more damning thing. The, the, when I make these points, often uh, people are like, oh, Perch, you're not getting it. They, it's because they went woke. And, and people think that's a deeper burn. But actually, it's more of an excuse, to be honest. The deep burn for Disney is you have no idea who your target audience is. You don't know. You, you can't sell to them. You can't make something they enjoy. And so even when you try and go woke or not go woke or go half woke or woke with uh, foam on top, whatever it happens to be, your product is dull. It's dull to your existing audience. It's dull to the woke audience. It's dull to everybody. The only people it, it seemingly is not dull to are, you know, mid-30 and 40-year-old people on Twitter who, for whatever reason, feel like they need to jump in and white knight whatever, uh, you know, whatever Disney does. Watching these uh, grown men going, oh, the people complaining about Wish are racist. It's like, the kids too? You're, you're now at the place where you're... you're the kids, the kids say it's boring. We're now at a place where we're going to call eight-year-olds racist. Yikes. Anyway, um, year without a billion dollar film. Again, you know, they had a, they, they had a year like this nine years ago. So this isn't like, uh, some people portray it's like for a hundred years, Disney has made a billion dollars and now no more because of woke. It's now it's, it's, it's been nine years. But still, some pretty bad things on the horizon. The movies that should have hit didn't. A couple of movies that were never going to hit didn't. But more than anything, um, you know, the, the, the stuff just isn't good. And so of those films, Guardians was not a bad movie. Guardians 3 was, was okay. And the fact that a okay movie which by all projection should have crossed a billion dollars and should have done better. The fact that that one also didn't hit that's that more than anything else is the one that should be terrifying to Disney. Anyway, thanks for listening.